of just before the service started that she's introducing me to a lot of, uh, I think I said new old hymns, but I think it probably should be old new hymns, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing that wonderful medley this morning. Uh, what a blessing it, it was for us. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you to our service of worship this morning on this day, uh, which is actually uh, All Saints Sunday, which in a couple of minutes we'll recognize those from our uh, membership who have passed on before us. Uh, but before I do that, I want to remind you of a couple of announcements and things that are happening not only in the church, but also in the community. Um, Tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., the men's prayer group is going to be meeting. They meet typically in the fellowship hall. Uh, and then at 8 a.m., the food pantry will be in operation from 8 to 9. Uh, I'm sure that, uh, that they could use your help if you want to come and help. Uh, but that will be from 8 to 9. I want to remind you as well that this coming Wednesday at 4 uh, is going to be the beginning of the Bible study that I'll be leading and we'll be looking at 1 Kings. Uh, and so uh, you don't have to sign up for that. Just show up uh, and we'll be meeting uh, in the fellowship hall. Then on Saturday, next Saturday, on the 7th, uh, is the community community recognition of Veterans Day. And so they'll have their service at the courthouse, and I believe it's, is there a... Um, the gazebo. Gazebo, thank you. I was trying to think of the name of it, but uh, uh, they'll be meeting at the gazebo at 10 a.m. And all are welcome to attend that service. Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes, sir. You'll go see Dr. Westbrook That's right. at 12 o'clock today for his 100th birthday. That's right. So they'll be they'll be uh, gathering or leaving, I guess, the Baptist Church. Yeah, they'll be out for the Baptist Church. Okay, and that's at noon. Yeah. Okay. Any other announcements? Well, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this morning. And we thank you for this brand new day that you've given to us. Father, will you empower us by an act of our wills to relinquish that which, which we might desire or want, that which weighs heavy upon our heart and mind, and focus our hearts and our thoughts on you at least for this one hour. <clears throat> Lord, bless our time together, we pray, as we ask all of this now in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen.
before we get into our time of recognizing those who have gone before us, I want to give you a word of instruction because I'm going to do something just a, well, it is not just a wee bit different, but it is different in our prayer time this morning. As I was driving here, I was thinking and praying how to go about moving from recognizing the names into our prayer time without disrupting or interrupting the sanctity of the moment. Uh, and so I know that, that taking prayer requests is an important part of our worship service. So what I'm going to do is borrow something that we typically do in the Emmaus community. And what we typically do is during the prayer time, somebody will call out a name without any kind of details, just calling out that person's name. And you all will respond, Lord, hear our prayer. I'm not talking about these names that are listed here uh, as we recognize them. But I'm talking about in our prayer time this morning, I'm going to give you an opportunity to just say a name, somebody whom you think is in need of prayer, and after that name is called out, we all will say, Lord, hear our prayer. You understand? Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, in your bulletin this morning is the All Saints Litany. And of course, you know that the bowl part is the part where you respond. And so, ever-living God, this day revives in us memories of loved ones who are no more. What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved, we lived our lives together. Their memory is a blessing forever. Months or years may have passed, and still we feel near to them. Our hearts yearn for them. Though the bitter grief has softened, a duller pain abides. For the place where once they stood is empty now. The links of love and longing cannot break. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We see the now with the eye of memory, their faults forgiven, their virtues grown larger. So does goodness live, and weakness fade from sight. We remember them with gratitude and bless their names. Their memory is a blessing forever. And we remember as well the members who but yesterday were part of our congregation and community. To all who cared for us and labored for all people, we pay tribute. May we prove worthy of carrying on the tradition of our faith. For now the task is ours. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We give you thanks that they now live and reign with you. As a great crowd of witnesses, they surround us with their blessings and offer you hymns of praise and thanksgiving. They are alive forevermore. Amen. And so this morning we specifically remember those who've passed on before us from our midst. John Horton. Augustus Jones. Thank you, Lord, for this, your servant. Bill Rogers. Thank you, Lord, for this, your servant. May we pray. Father, it is with grateful hearts that we remember the lives of these three individuals. 
Father, some of them may have been family members. Some may have been friends. And some may have been simple acquaintances. A brother or a sister in Christ. And so, Father, we pray, thanking you for their lives. Thanking you for all that they mean to us. And we pray thanking you that they are now in your presence. Lord, besides these three names that were specifically mentioned this morning, you know, Father, that there are others family members, friends, people in this community whom we were close to over the years. And Father, this day is a reminder to us of their passing and all that they meant to us. And even though they were not necessarily members of this church, They still mean a great deal to us. So, Father, for those who are grieving the loss of someone with whom they were close to who passed, whether it was this year or in the years gone by, we pray, Father, for them. Pray, Father, for your comfort for them and for you to minister to them. Lord, I thank you for every person who is here this morning. I thank you, Father, for their life. I thank you, Father, for their faithfulness. Thank you, Father, for their love for your church and for you. Lord, you know the things that are weighing heavy upon their heart and mind this morning. And so, Father, will you minister to them? Minister to their need according to your will and according to your riches and glory. Father, there are times when we pray and we don't see an immediate response. So, Father, we become frustrated. And we begin to question where you are in the midst of all of it. Lord, although we may not understand your delay, we are grateful even though you may not be showing yourself to us. We're thankful for your word. That by faith, you are continually with us. Lord, we also want to take this time this morning to pray for those who weigh heavy upon our hearts, those in particular who may need healing, whether it's a physical healing or an emotional healing or, yes, maybe even a spiritual healing. And so, Lord, we name them before you now. Do you know? Lord, hear our prayer. Sarah Powell. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 
heard these prayer needs. And so, Lord, whether it is healing, whether it is an emotional need or a physical need or even a spiritual need, Lord, we pray that you would meet each need in your time. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer this morning. As we lift it before you and pray it in the name of Jesus, pray the prayer that he taught us as his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I just got a text message, um, it's either from AJ or from um, uh, Molly, thank you, uh, that they had to take Susan to the ER. She was texting me last night, early this morning, that she was having um, a fever. Uh, it was 99.9, .9, and I think when it gets to 100.3, she is not supposed to wait. She's supposed to get right there. So um, do be in prayer for Susan. And she, I know that has to be so frustrating for her to keep going back to the hospital. Um, but as you know, Susan has the most amazing spirit about her who just keeps on going with the flow, even though life can be so frustrating. So uh, do pray for her. My scripture text is taken from Matthew 23, and I'm also going to be reading Micah 6. Now, this morning, since we're on this kind of kick of doing things a little bit different, I'm going to do things this morning just a little bit different with my sermon, and that is I'm not going to specifically, although I am going to specifically read the scripture, I'm not going to read it verse by verse necessarily. I'm going to weave it into uh, the sermon text. So don't go home saying to, to your friends and your family members, well, the preacher didn't read scripture this morning. Yes, I, yes, I am. <laughs> now, I'm sure you've heard the scripture text from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount that says, Judge not, lest ye be judged. Perhaps you've used that in a quote a time or two in the past. Whether you were talking to yourself or to somebody else. How easy is it to express that to somebody else, but how difficult is it to live that out? I mean, I can get in my car and drive a short distance and find all kinds of drivers who should have never received their driver's license. And to add to it, I throw in a little criticism directed at the police department, not giving these clowns a ticket like they should. I can go to the grocery store and I can get in the 10 items or less Aisle. And of course, there's always that one person who has 11 items. Well, then I start judging right and left. Because if you can't read that sign that says 10 items or less, there's something wrong with you people. Can't you follow simple directions? And why isn't that teenage checker, and what in the world is she wearing? Why can't she focus and work faster and get us out of here quicker? We're great 
at judging the world around us by standards that we would probably resent if they were held toward us. Yet judging makes us feel good, doesn't it? Judging makes us feel good because it puts us in a better light than others. It puts us on a rung or two higher up the ladder than those other people. That's kind of what the legal experts and the Pharisees were doing in Jesus' day. They were putting themselves in a better light than others. So Jesus spoke to the crowds and his disciples and he warned them in Matthew 23, starting at verse 1, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but don't do what they do. They do not practice what they preach. Everything they do is done for people to see. Later in chapter 23, around verse 27, and sprinkled all throughout, Jesus describes the Jewish officials as hypocrites, blind guides, whitewashed tombs. He describes them as snakes and a brood of vipers. Now, one might think on reading this passage that Jesus is being judgmental himself. What he was doing was expressing to them that they were living out their religion as a show for others. They worked long and exhausting hours trying to prop up a better than others image. Jesus tells them that they give a tenth of their spices, but when it comes down to it, they neglect the more important things like justice and mercy. Faithfulness. I wonder if we live our lives more like the legal experts and the Pharisees than we do like those imitating Jesus. After repeated confrontations with the scribes and Pharisees, Jesus finally had enough. He had a stomach full of it. Now, he didn't have a problem with their religious traditions or teachings that they had lived it out. The problem was Jesus recognized how they were abusing their authority. Because it was nothing less than spiritual abuse. They behaved in ways that went against what they teach and say. Now, how many of you had mamas that said, do as I say, not as I do? <laughs> this was one of those scenarios. They talk about glorifying God, but what they're most interested in is glorifying self. I just remembered that my mama typically watches this, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to be in trouble. these Pharisees were doing was they were trying to draw everyone's attention to themselves so that everybody would think and say, aren't they amazing? Aren't they wonderful? Aren't they holy? Because you see, everything that they did, they did to be noticed by others. Has anything changed? I mean, this whole idea of glorifying self isn't something new or different. It's human nature for us to act with such hypocrisy and pride. It's easy for us to judge the attitudes and actions 
of the scribes and the Pharisees of Jesus' day, but it's a whole other thing altogether to admit that we're a whole lot like them. I know I am. It's so easy for me to confuse my own interests with God's purposes, my own power with God's authority, my own social standing with God's glory. Now, church, it's nice to be recognized and appreciated. I want people to like me. There's nothing wrong with any of that. I mean, after all, it's important for us to, to feel as if we matter and are appreciated. But all of that becomes dangerous when... And that becomes the sole focus. Just like the Pharisees who wanted to be one up on others. Who wanted to look good and be admired by others. So what is the solution? What was Jesus' desire for these Jewish officials? In Micah chapter 6, the people are asking that age-old question that many people have asked time and time and time again. What is God's will? What is God's will for me and for you? Verses 6 through 8 say this. With what should I approach the Lord and bow down before God on high? Should I come before him with entirely burnt offerings? With year-old calves? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with many torrents of oil? Should I give my oldest child for my crime? The fruit of my body for the sin of my spirit? What does God want? The prophet asks. The answer? The Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you. To do what is right. To love mercy. And to walk humbly with your God. What Jesus wanted for them and for us is to love kindness. Or as some interpretations call it, to love mercy. To have compassion or forgiveness towards someone when it's in their power to punish or harm. To love showing in compassion and forgiveness for those whom we would much rather punish. In other words, you and I are called. To show self-sacrificial love. Because that's what God is like. God shows us mercy and compassion. Even though it would be completely within his rights to punish us. Because we deserve it. Over and over and over again in the Gospels. We're told that Jesus had compassion for the people that he came across. <clears throat> for they were like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus loves nothing more than to forgive the sinner. To bring sight to the blind. To preach good news to the poor. And to proclaim freedom for those who are held captive by sin and brokenness. All Jesus wanted was for the Pharisees and the other Jewish officials to really follow the scriptural mandate by loving others and showing mercy to them above everything else. I wonder if you and I carry out that mandate if we regularly and faithfully live that out in our lives, how might it change our lives? 
How might our circumstances be totally different? How might our world change? Can I tell you, it's so easy to get off track in our Christian walk. And it can happen just like that. It's so easy to go from being a lover of people to being their judge. And when we become judgmental and we become like the legal experts, the scribes and the Pharisees, that's when we step over the line. Jesus said that the Pharisees place all kinds of burdens on people's shoulders, but don't lift a finger to try to help them. But Jesus says, come to me, all you who are heavy, carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Put on my yoke and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble, and you will find rest for your weary souls. My yoke is easy, but my burden is light. What does the Lord require of us? What is God's will for you and for me? The answer is to do justice, to love mercy to walk humbly with our God. If we practice this way of living, we become liberated from the exhausting work of being obsessed with ourselves and what others think of us. We move from being me-centered to being God and neighbor-centered. We naturally become servants of others. We become people who lift others up and get great joy from doing so, not expecting anything in return. And this great joy, which comes from lovingly serving others, lifts us up, not in a way that makes us look good before others, but it lifts us up spirit to do the will of God is to turn from being self-centered to looking toward neighbor so what is the key to changing the world how do you as one individual make any kind of difference in the world whatsoever Jesus says when we stop judging others love them with the love of Jesus. And what does that involve? We have to take the focus off of ourselves and move it onto the other for the sake of Jesus Christ in the world. That's the key to changing Lord, we're reminded, especially on this day, on this All Saints Sunday, that you call us to remember. Yes, Lord, you call us to remember that we were sinners, that we were aliens, that that God loves us with an everlasting mercy. You call us to remember that you, Jesus, act justly and love mercy. You call us to remember that you, Jesus, suffered and died on the cross for each one of us when we absolutely did not deserve anything but alienation and punishment. Father, you call us to remember. Father, if we 
truly remember all of those things, we will act justly. We will love mercy. And we will walk humbly with our God. Empower us, Father, we pray. Through your Holy Spirit. To walk in such a way. So that we would make a difference. Your world. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer as we ask it in Jesus' name. So you and I are called to go out into the world and to live in such a way that is becoming of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which means loving mercy and kindness, even for those who may not necessarily deserve it. But then again, neither do we. So go forth to live in such a way where you are a lover of justice and mercy and kindness for the sake of Jesus Christ in the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and